What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys combos for the ABC deck profile that you guys saw in yesterday's video. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys essentially how this deck can play out, how these engines interact with each other because you are playing three different engines in this deck. However, they're all really powerful and they all synergize with each other really well. So if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Guys, we've been killing it with the uploads for the last three weeks. You guys have been killing it with subscribing. I appreciate every single one of you. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it rolling. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the combos. I hope you guys enjoy. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So with that, let's get into the video. All right. So one thing just before we get into the combos here, I do want to say that because this deck has so many different ways to play and it's not that linear, what we're actually going to be doing in today's video is we're just going to be going through test hands. And the reason for that is because everything is kind of like one card semi combos if that makes sense so for that reason we're just gonna go straight through test hands we're gonna see what the test hands can do and just how far it can go so with that let's get into some test hands so the first test hand actually funny enough over here uh we have two ash and imperm so we have three hand traps but we have a hanger and we also have a theory on disco coliseum but the thing is like these cards are just one card like combos for you so these are kind of actually really nice hands to open yes you're susceptible to hand traps don't get me wrong but i just want to show you guys how you guys can play this deck so in the comments if you guys hit me with what if you get hit with an ash and a diddy crow and and then five million hand traps like okay sucks every if you get if any deck gets hit with five million hand traps you're not playing but uh with this reason i just want to show you guys what you guys can do with this deck so you're going to start off by activating hanger here you can add a union monster here you're probably going to add b b is always the best one to add so you always want to want to search to b here you're going to normal summon your b you could have gone Therion's coliseum first if you wanted to so that you can keep the hanger on the board doesn't really matter that much what order you do sometimes it's actually really nice to have this on the field of the end phase because if a monster is destroyed by battle instead of the graveyard you can target a Therion monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand so that's kind of really nice because sometimes this gives you a theory on follow-up but you could do it the opposite way where you just use this first to search the theory on then you go into hanger i just want to show you guys what exactly you can do so here you're going to go union hanger you're going to equip the driver driver is going to activate if you guys have ever played abc before you guys kind of know these combos here what you can do is actually you're going to equip the a more than anything i think the a is the better one to equip here you're going to activate the a to special summon it so what you're going to do now is because you don't have the extra piece you don't have the summon in your hand what you're going to do is you're going to use these two to actually just go into your platinum gadget and this is why i mean pl like platinum gadget is really important if you guys watch a deck profile you guys know what i was talking about but yeah platinum is just really important here you're just going to activate the b you're not going to activate the a obviously you kind of want to keep the b in the graveyard so you're going to activate the b to search a c to your hand this is going to be able to special summon the c but there's actually going to be a really cool combo you can do so what ends up happening is you can actually use this to special summon your c right so first you're going to start off by doing this then what you're going to do is you're going to activate your theory on field spell so that you can add a theory monster from your deck to your hand here of course you're going to add the regulus Okay. Now again, if you wanted to do this a different way, you guys can do this first. Okay, it's really up to you. But here you're gonna target the B. You're gonna be able to special summon the Regulus, and then you're gonna summon the B or equip the B, I should say. But you can actually activate the B to summon itself. And then now what's really cool is you can use the B as well as the C to make an IP Masquerina. So now what's up happening is you can activate the B effect again, which is nice because you get more cards to your hand, which is really nice. Here we're just gonna add another B to follow up for next turn. But here what you're gonna actually end up having is you're gonna have IP Masquerina with Platinum Gadget to potentially go into an Apollo on your opponent's turn. Or or if you tag it with your ABC Buster Dragon, which we're going to make just now, we're going to make the ABC Buster Dragon. What you can end up doing now is, let's say you have a card in your hand to discard. You have three cards, actually. Here, we're going to set our Imperm, and then, you know, we're going to have the Imperm set as well. But what you can do is you can go Platinum Gadget and IP Masquerina into an Apollo on your opponent's turn, which is going to give you two Monster Negates. You're also going to have Theory on Regulus, which is also an Omni Negate, and you're going to have a Dragon Buster with a Banish. Or what you could do is you can actually tag out the ABC Buster Dragon on your opponent's turn. And then once you tag out the Buster Dragon, of course, you're going to want to use the Banish effect first. But once you tag this out, you're going to have three pieces on your side of the field with those three pieces you can use ip those pieces as well as a card on your opponent's side of the field to make your underworld goddess so there's just so many different ways to combo with this deck and so many different things so it depends on the matchup really because different matchups you might want to do different things but there's just really a lot of ways you can do this okay so for this hand obviously you guys can see this is a cracked hand this hand is crazy because you can play through multiple things you have a cross out you have an omni negate set up you have your hanger you even have a piece and an unauthorized reactivation if somehow your hanger gets stopped after everything you do so this hand is like one of those cracked hands and i'm going to show you guys where you guys can go with this kind of hand so here what you're going to do is you're going to use your water enchantress you're going to search your right of artemisia your right of artemisia you're going to activate this you're always going to want to do this combo first and the reason you want to do this combo first is because you're going to have an omni negate on your side of the field which is 
pretty much always going to guarantee your things to go through. But again, like I said, worst case scenario, even if it doesn't go through, you have so much to do here. Okay. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually activate our fateful adventure. And the reason we want to do it now is mostly because yes, there are more, I guess you could say optimal ways to do it. And by that, I mean, you can go uni hanger first, you can do all that stuff first and then have more cards to pitch. But the reason I don't want to do it that way is because essentially I want to put the Omni Negate up on the board and the Omni Negate on the board is going to set us up essentially so that all our combos do go through. So for that reason, you guys can actually drop the cross out here, but I'm actually going to drop the Sea Crush Wyvern because dropping the Sea Crush Wyvern means that we're always going to have guaranteed a piece in our graveyard. So here we're going to do is we're going to summon the Griffin Rider and boom, now we've set up our negate, which means that our combos are going to go through. Our Faithful Adventure is going to get to search as a Draco back here, which is kind of nice here as well. And Draco back, even though we're not going to get to pitch it off of the Faithful Adventure, Draco back is going to be really good for us because once we go into ABC Dragon Buster, we can always pitch it with the ABC Dragon Buster and then get it back, right? So essentially you're not pitching a card with Dragon Buster, which is very, very important. Then from here, you kind of just do basic ABC stuff. You go Union Hanger. It's nice because you're going to always have this on the board. You're going to be able to search it B. If they have an Ash here or something, you go, okay, Griffin Rider sucks, right? You can even go cross out on the Ash or something like that. So this is a thing where it's like you're setting up multiple ways to be able to play through hand traps, play through whatever your opponent has. So here, of course, we're going to go Union Hanger on the B Buster Drake. And it kind of just becomes simplistic, like ABC boards here. You're going to go Union Driver. If you've ever played ABC, like I said, if you ever played ABC, you kind of know how these combos work. Equip your A. You're going to activate your A to special summon it. The nice thing here is you actually don't even need to go into Platinum Gadget because you already have the C in the graveyard. So what you can actually do here, and I think this is what the better play would be, is to just go into IP for two and then you're going to activate your because you don't have a theory on here i will say that you don't have a theory on if you had a theory on play here it would be even stronger but of course you don't so here you're just going to activate your b you're not going to want to activate your a because you're going to want to keep your piece in the graveyard but you're going to want to search another b and then what you're going to end up doing actually here is you can just make your abc dragon buster with your three pieces in the graveyard and then this is actually a really strong board for multiple reasons because again ip mascarina plus your pieces means you're always going to guarantee it in a disruption because whether you go into apollo or you go into underworld goddess to break your opponent's board there's just so many different ways to go about it and it's just always going to be disruption for you right but you're actually not going to end your board on this what you're going to actually end up doing is you're going to use your unauthorized reactivation to target your abc dragon buster now at this point it kind of all depends on what you think your opponent has i don't really think there are any targets for super poly i don't think that your opponent can ever super poly you at this point what you can actually end up doing is you can just go and straight equip an a assault core it's really up to you what you think your opponent is gonna have you can, i wouldn't say equip the c here but either equip the a or the b because this way your buster dragon is going to be active unaffected here we're going to do b and the reason b is really good not just because of the super poly you can also argue like droplet you can also argue different cards like dark ruler no more there's just so many cards so b buster drake equipping to a b c is always probably one of the stronger ones and then you're going to end your board with like maybe Maybe potentially a cross out set you don't even need to set this but the nice thing here is abc is going to get to pitch your draco back which means draco back is going to be able to come back to your brave token so you don't get a pitch here you're going to get an omni negate you're going to have ip that can go into either an apollo for four negates or you can just use your opponent's monsters to go into underworld goddess and you have follow-up for your next turn and you even have more follow-up because once you tag out with your abc dragon buster your union hanger is going to trigger to equip a piece from your deck so this is what i mean by the boards don't look super powerful they don't have like seven negates on them right away but if you look at it like more in depth right just not on the surface level you have your banish here you have an omni negate you have potentially four more negates with apollo you also have potentially like you know taking away your opponent's monster for underworld goddess you have follow-up you have a card that's going to get itself back off the abc by a dragon buster so this way you're not going to be losing advantage so yeah there's just a lot of ways to play this deck and each hand is just very different the way you end boards but they're all very powerful so here I just want to show you guys a hand that doesn't look that powerful, but it actually really is. You have the terraforming at the end of the day for your Union Hanger, which means that as soon as you get to Union Hanger, you essentially have your full ABC combo with your Platinum Gadget and whatnot. So that's why this is really strong, but it looks like one of those like not great hands because you have the driver in your hand. DD Crow is always going to be good. It's always nice to have a hand trap, but you do have the cross out, which means that your combos are going to go through. So I'm just going to be showing you guys a more or less like, I guess, basic combo, but not like the most powerful combo. This is like one of the weaker hands, but I'm going to be showing you guys why even some of the weaker hands are very, very powerful here, right? So here, of course, we're going to equip the Union Driver. This is why I play two, by the way, if you guys want to check out the deck profile, you have to play two because there's going to be situations where you draw one and you hate it and you can't play, right? Because think about it. If this was the only one we played, we couldn't be able to combo like this. So it is very important sometimes to play the two. Now, funny enough, though, you can actually equip the C here. And then when you equip the C, you have the Driver in your hand. 
But here's what we're actually going to do. Because we actually have a valid target, we are going to equip the C. Because what we can do here is we can use the C to special summon it. And then we're going to use these two. We don't actually need to go into Platinum Gadget here, funny enough. Because we have the driver in hand, we can actually search with the B first and get to special summon the A. So it's actually really cool in that sense. So here what you're going to do, you can just go straight into your IP Mascarena. Because what's going to end up happening is you're going to activate your C as Chainlink 1. Okay, but you're gonna activate your B as chain link two because you already have a valid target for your C in your hand. You can activate your B as your chain link two. Your B is gonna search your A, but now your C, funny enough, can actually summon that A. It doesn't have to summon the new driver, you guys can summon the A. So just a cool fact for anyone who's like new to the deck or just learning to play the deck. That's just one of the cool things where if you already have a target for it, you guys can play it this way instead, right? Now here what you're gonna do is you can just summon your regulus and equip, yeah, I guess your B, it doesn't really matter which one you equip. Well, let's just go B here, right? So you summon your regulus, you're gonna equip your B, you're gonna actually activate your B here. So this is where the deck changes depending on what you're playing against, right? Let's say you're going into game three, you're going first, and you know you're going up against a Despia matchup. I actually wouldn't make another link two here. I would actually just use these two to go straight into a Baguska. Even though you're turning off your own regulus, Baguska is just way too powerful against the Despia matchup. So I I would maybe even just go into a Baguska here. So you have that option. You have a Tornado Dragon option. I mean, I wouldn't go into Tornado Dragon depending, of course, what you're playing against. If you're playing against Eldritch or you're playing against a back row deck, yeah, go into Tornado Dragon. You don't always have to go into ABC Buster right away because you also have the IP, which means you're always going to get the pieces in the graveyard regardless, right? So there's just so many different ways you guys can do this. And you always want to make the right play based off of what you're playing against. And, and that's just kind of how, how I go about it myself. So here, what you can do if you wanted to, you can go Barricade Board Blocker. You can even go into Lina, depending on which opponent has in their graveyard. Like, obviously, you wouldn't want to go into Lina turn one, but there's just so many different ways to do it. Here, you can just actually just honestly, I'm just going to show you guys the different things you can do. Here, you can just go into Apollo right away. You're going to get to trigger your B Buster Drake, which is going to get to search you a card. So, I'm just trying to show you guys like different ways you guys can do this. It, it all really depends on what you're playing against. And that's again, the, what I mean by this deck really is not linear in terms of what you do because here now you're setting up three Monster Negates as well as an Omni Negate, plus potentially a cross out depending on what your opponent has. And the Mirror Match cross out is great by the way because if you cross out a piece essentially you're not going to be using these pieces effects anyways so if you cross out a piece you can you know banish a piece in that sense and then stop them from playing so there's that you have a dv crow which is just really good into a lot of formats so i guess here you can also just go into but i mean you're going to want to go into buster dragon no matter what here right because you're going to want to pitch the driver it doesn't really do anything in your hand but i just want to show you guys like different hands make different boards and and the thing is, it's not even a single board that you're trying to get to. It's all dependent on what your opponent is playing. And then based on what your opponent is playing, you guys can make those boards that are good into what your opponent is playing. I don't know if that makes sense, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that depending on what you're playing into, this deck can actually just make a board for any situation. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. These are some combos. Now keep in mind, like I said in the video multiple times, the combos aren't really linear. However, these are the kind of combos that you need to know and kind of have an idea how to play these hands out because each hand is going to look different each combo is going to look different each end board is going to look different and then you'll always have an answer for something so that's why i think this deck is so fun i'm super happy abc is meta again thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already appreciate every single one of you thank you guys all for being here and with that spanko signing out peace